guys, it's Will from Tested. It is time to take something apart. That's right, it's the fourth generation Kindle. It's relatively brand new. It's the one without a keyboard. It's not the touch that's not out yet. Uh, I don't know that this thing is user serviceable at all, but we're gonna open it up and see what's inside. On the table, I have a handful of things. I have, of course, my trusty screwdriver. It's got like 16, 20 different bits, something crazy. I have these guys, which are new. These are priors. The way these work is they're very fine edges and you put them into tight reveals on the device and then can kind of wedge up to get up underneath it. It's a little bit more uh, precise than a spudger, even the metallic ones, which of course I have over here. So, I, and then of course I have a couple of spudgers. I have a metal spudger, handful of metal spudgers, a plastic spudger or two, and my trusty screw tape to store screws so I don't lose them. Uh, without any further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna use one of these new prying tools first and pop the back off of the Kindle. Now the trick is to look under here and see if you can see how the, how the connectors work. I'm gonna use that one up under there to hold it, and I'm gonna put my big plastic spudger up under here and just pry. That seems like the wrong answer. Let's go to the bottom and see if we can get it from that side. Now on this on this one, I, I've looked at this a little bit. I don't know that there's a way to pry this open without destroying it to the point that you'll void your warranty. So uh, I, it's almost certain that when we're done with this, you'll be able to tell that this was opened at some point in the past. So don't do this unless you're willing to throw your $78, $9 away. So I've got one corner wedged open here. I'm gonna jam a spudger in here just to hold it in place. And I'm gonna work down the side real gently. Come in from the bottom, there we go. Uh, that looks like pretty much everything. I think it feels like there's probably some glue up under here. We'll discover how that works in a minute. Uh, that side's pretty well wedged open. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now these little plastic pry bars are, I don't want to say they're disposable because they're not quite, but they don't last forever uh, just because the points are very fine and you know, you're going to put a fair amount of pressure on them in a way that's probably not real good for the, for the device. The nice thing about them is that they don't gouge up the, the side of the, of, the, of the device that you're opening as much as say a metal spudger does. I'm going to use a metal spudger now to gouge up the side. There we go. Gentle lifting. This side in general is just being difficult. Oh, this is scary. So you can see the two types, there's two hooks over here on, on this side. I assume that the other side's the same. I'm having a hard time getting them to release. I think probably because of the extra pressure from having this lifted up. I can't tell what's holding it up at the top though. That's the, this is the, this is the confusion point. I don't think I want to bend this anymore. I'm going to warp the plastic. I almost think, yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can see there's a couple little tabs up underneath the bottom here. And if I can get it up just high enough, it'll just pop out. Try to do that. So I'm gonna use a metal spudger. Just there we go. See, popped out. That's good. We're making progress here. We do the same thing on the other side. This is a lot of pressure to be putting on this plastic. Oh, there we go. But everybody wins in the end. Okay, so I've got three of the tabs out. Well, four, three and a half. I guess that one counts. Uh, the two on the bottom, I'm not sure exactly how this is supposed to snap into place at the best of times, but we'll see how it goes when we get it all the way broken down. Um, and I think I can probably take a pointy edge guy up under here. That's too pointy edge. There we go. Oh yeah, it's definitely glued in the middle here. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, I might have to go get the heat gun. Okay, so this is a, a little baby heat gun. They come really big. It's basically like a hair dryer that gets a little bit hotter than a hair dryer typically does. And what I'm gonna do is there's a spot in the middle. Uh, I don't think you can see it, but maybe in, in here, right around the middle spot, uh, it's glued. The back of the case is actually glued to a big piece of metal. It looks like maybe a battery or something. Uh, so being really careful not to catch anything on fire or melt the plastic, I'm gonna use the heat gun on the low setting to kind of just you know, loosen the glue a little bit so it'll pop off easier. Here we go. Oh, 
You want to watch real closely to make sure there's no signs of like discoloration or anything like that. You don't want to get it too, too hot. Just warm enough that the glue is going to be loose and tacky. Hopefully it's the right kind of glue. I don't even know. Okay. Well, that definitely helped with the glue. Now I got to release the rest of the hooks. More heat. Again, this is a slow and steady situation. You don't want to be in too much of a rush to make this uh, get hot because you don't want to overheat it, especially if the lithium ion batteries underneath it. They don't like being real hot. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but look, it's the plastic's coming off inside. Thank you, heat gun. Go ahead and go down this edge here. Get the rest of the stuff down here. Oh. Oh. And voila. Hmm. This might actually go back together. I only broke one of these. Well, no, I broke two. So if you look, you can see that I broke two of the snaps on the on the connectors on the right side as I was popping this off. There's some other smaller ones in here, so it'll probably be okay. Uh, and then of course this kind of jelly glue uh, gets real loose when you heat it up. And it'll still be tacky when I put this back together, assuming I can get it back together. So it looks like these are Torx 6s, I think. Yeah, it looks like Torx 6s. So they're these little, you know, the six point stars. They're really common. Uh, if you have any kind of adjustable, take apart style screwdriver, like this guy, this General Precision Plus, uh, you should be able to pop all this stuff open. I'm gonna start by taking off the heat spreader over what is probably the CPU or maybe the battery. There's a lot of empty space in this compared to previous generation Kindles. I mean, clearly one of the things that uh, Amazon was trying to do with this was reduce cost. And it looks like the way they did that was actually just not, you know, packing it full of electronics and battery. I think the specs say that this has about half the battery life of the previous generation Kindle. Oh, and here we go. This is the battery. You'll note it's not hot, even though I just had the heat, the heat gun pointed at it. You definitely don't want to overheat the lithium ion batteries. And you want to be real careful working on these because if you expose them to air, then some kind of gnarly stuff can happen. Sometimes they can catch on fire and things like that. It's not good. I don't know what any of these screws are attached to. It looks like these are, uh, well, actually, here we go. Uh, these, these two guys right here look like they operate the switches, uh, the forward and back button switches on either side. Uh, and there's, it looks like three of those on each side. I'm not going to do those yet. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery so we don't have power coming into this guy. And I don't know exactly, I think this is the kind, yeah, so, so this ribbon cable, I don't know if you can see this, but it just flips up. And you can use a metal spudger or something like that. Just be careful not to nick the ribbon. They're relatively sturdy and it just snaps into place there. I think that this battery is glued in place. Yeah, I would advise against trying to remove that. It seems like the battery is not gonna be user replaceable in this unless you go to really, really great efforts. Uh, they've also done a really interesting job padding it. I've never seen this before. It's a lot of space to protect a relatively small lithium ion battery. Uh, these two guys are for the switches. I think these might just pull straight out. Yeah, they do. Okay, so the two side switches, the cables for those just slide right out. There's really nothing to it. Just hook them and then gently pull. A pair of tweezers would probably be handy for this. They just pop right out. I don't know how they're gonna go back in, but we'll see it. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I am uh, increasingly not optimistic about getting this back together and working properly. Uh, next, I'm gonna pop these EM shields off of the chips. They are not coming off at all. You know, also interesting, previous Kindles had a serial port in here and I don't see that anywhere. So it looks like really this is not a use, as user serviceable as previous previous devices were. Uh, these heat spreaders, aren't, uh, EM shields aren't gonna come off without uh, some desoldering. Uh, and then the last thing of course is this cable right here. I don't know how this one connects either. This looks like it's just a straight pull out. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get up underneath it a little bit and apply some Pulling force, you want to pull straight back. You don't want to lift up at all when you're doing this kind of cable. 
not the right one. Let's try this guy instead. And see, you can kind of do a little wiggle back and forth, to get it to release. Again, I don't know how we're gonna get these back in. This kind of cable is pretty tricky to get together without uh, the specific tool you use to jam it in there. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so the motherboard looks like it's all the way unscrewed. I don't know what's holding it in here. Fate, maybe? It might be glued down too. It may be that Amazon has glued every single component of this device into the, into the case. Um, I think that these little switch things aren't holding anything in place, but let's unscrew them and see, just for giggles. I think that these are just holding the screws in place for the, for the uh, um, side switches, but the, the springs in place that give the side switches some tension. But yeah, that's all that is. Oh, God, why, did, why, did they, why does anybody ever glue a motherboard into something? That's so stupid. Because they don't want people taking it apart. Look, I can answer my own questions. I don't want to use the heat gun here because uh, the components and stuff under here are pretty doubt sensitive to heat. So if I heat up the whole thing, from this side, I'm gonna torch some CPUs probably. If I heat up this side, I'm gonna ruin the e-ink screen. So there's no easy way to, to separate the glue here. You just have to apply some pressure. I got up underneath, uh, actually right up under here and was able to apply some pressure using the metal edge of the battery compartment. Uh, you don't want to dig into the battery at all. Uh, now the thing that's holding it seems to be the bottom connectors. So what I'm gonna do is take my screwdriver, put it in this screw and just give it a little tug. See if I can get some, some uh, force lateral to the stickiness of the glue. So I'm using one of my nylon spudgers up under here to kind of separate it. I'm gonna scrape some of the glue away with a metal spudger. Really uncool, Amazon. Uh, and then I'm gonna use my thumbs to kind of work it out. This is doing really bad things for this, this thing. I don't think this is gonna work again. Just putting that out there. Uh, oh, am I bleeding? Where from? Oh, wow. How the hell did I do that? Can somebody grab me a paper towel? If, the, if we need to wait until I stop bleeding to continue, that's cool. It kind of makes it a little more metal. I wonder if I can get up under the front bezel and pop it off that way. There could be a screw under here. I don't know, it's just a cosmetic. Stop bleeding. I don't think I can get this out anymore without really just smashing stuff. I'm gonna try one more lift. The thing is I don't see any screw holes in here. So I don't, I don't think there's any way to get this guy out. Um, I'm just gonna seal it back up and call it a day. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna make sure I get all my ribbon cables out from underneath the board. That seems important. Uh, and then push this back down onto the glue. Ever so hateful glue. I'm gonna run the two button cables from the side back up into the connectors. And get the monitor cable from the right side over here in. Actually, I'm gonna put the motherboard back down with the screws before we go any further, because it's, uh, it's a little flappy. Also, I'm bleeding on the Kindle. So I got that going for me. Uh, let's get this, uh, this big ribbon for the display back in. That's an important one. Without that, it's not going to work at all. Uh, one thing you can do is take like a metal spudger, something flat, and put it up under here and then squeeze it between your thumbs, your thumb and the spudger, uh, and kind of waggle it in. It's not, this is not the recommended way to do this. Okay, so I got one side in. I'm gonna give it a little push with the spudger from the other. Uh, using a plastic spudger, not a metal one. That's back in. Uh, this next connector is pretty easy. It's the one with the flip up lid. So you just basically put this down in here. The notches here on the ribbon cable actually tuck in inside the, the notches on the connector. So you see they just kind of will set in down here, just like so. And then you flip the lid down. 
give it a little push just to make sure it snaps into place. And that should be connected, that should be good. Um, and then the last thing is this other button cable. Should I wash the blood off of the, the EM spreader or just leave it? This one was much easier to put in before the motherboard was all the way screwed down, just for future reference. Ah, there we go. Okay. So just line it up and push. It's a little trickier than, than it looks. Um, by a little trickier, I really mean a lot trickier. So I've just got a few more screws to put back in. Uh, I need to reconnect the switch, put the cover back over the battery. I think that might be in case it explodes, actually, the more I think about it. It's a little bit of a weird place to put a metal thing over a giant battery, but we'll, we'll see what happens. This is one of those places that having a metallic uh, a magnetized screwdriver would be really handy. Good grief. My advice to you is to not take these little tiny screws off of God. Ah, yeah, there we go. There's the second one. Uh, snapping on the lid is going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is, is put it in like this and then fold it, bend it up in the middle so that both the, I can get both the tabs on the top and the bottom in and then snap it into place. Boom. And then the sides just click, click, click. Click, click, click. Probably should have tested the buttons before I did this in retrospect. That would have been clever. But oh well, if one's, I cut myself on the other hand now too. Good grief. Um, and there's blood on the screen, gross. And on the front. There's blood all over this thing. Nobody's gonna want this. Okay, so let's see if stuff works. Uh, forward front buttons work. Uh, yep, keyboard. Back button. Let's test the do, 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 forward, back, up, down, select. Everything works. And that is how to kind of take apart the Kindle fourth generation. The big lesson here is if something's glued shut, probably best to just leave it closed. It is really hard to open and reclose. And even a cheap, low powered heat gun like this one still costs 40 or $50. Um, other stuff, these pry bars are really, really invaluable. If you look, you can't really tell where I wedged open the Kindle, uh, even though I was getting into a tiny, tiny seam. It's a, it's a pretty good piece of technology. Uh, I'm impressed with this. It's still super empty inside. I wish that it was more user serviceable. And I miss the serial port. Now that that's back together, I'm gonna go fix up my thumb. Tested, I'm Will Smith. See you guys next time.